And thank you for joining us on this edition of From the Top. I'm here with Manish Singh. He's the CTO of Radisys. And Manish, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Of course, we're here at CTIA 2013. Um, you're doing a couple of demos right downstairs. One is on voiceover LTE. The other is on so, a small cell technology. But on the way up to the suite, we talked about uh, software-defined networking as well. You were over, over at Mobile World Congress launching that uh, as far as uh, the SDN technologies. Can you go into what's happening downstairs on the floor and specifically about SDN? Absolutely. So I, I think just starting from Redis's perspective, uh, we're focusing on uh, bringing enabling wireless infrastructure solutions for LTE networks end to end. So on the small on the radio access network side, we're bringing in small cell solutions. Then on the packet core side, we're bringing in our ATCA platforms, which have been very widely deployed uh, in the packet core. And now we are adding on top of these platforms our SDN capabilities, as well as virtualizing these platforms. So operators can really start rolling out network function virtualization workloads on top of these platforms. And then finally, in the IMS domain, uh, we are bringing out our media resource function, our MRF, for voice over LTE and RCS rollouts. And more importantly, in the context of SDN, may I mention, with our MRF, we have also virtualized that. So it's running as a virtual workload on our ATCA platforms and can run on other platforms as well. Now, of course, uh, software-defined networking is a new technology trying to virtualize a telecommunications network. It seems like a very complex issue and it's very hard to define. Can you, first of all, define SDN in, in the best way you can and tell us what the differences between the basic industry definition and the carrier definition. Right, so I think in terms of defining SDN, the simplistic definition that I can come up with for SDN is, it's all about decoupling the brains and the bronze of the network. So typically if you look at the, the way the underlying networking infrastructure has been built, you have the brains and the bonds and the management infrastructure all coupled together, and that makes the managing the network very complex. With SDN, you can decouple the brains and the bronze, make the, uh, the bronze really lifting the packets up and down much more dumb and really centralize the intelligence more in the controllers. Now, that's, how, that's what the vision is, and if you look at the state of the industry, a lot of that vision today is getting realized in the cloud, in the enterprise clouds, large data centers. When we look at bringing these technologies onto the telecom networks, there are certain differences. One of the biggest difference is the telecom networks, if you look at the topology, they are hierarchical in nature versus if you look inside a data center, it's a pretty flat network. So the kind of problems that you run into uh, and the kind of issues that the industry has to tackle in the context of an enterprise versus telecom are different. I'll give you one simple example. When we talk about centralizing the brains in the context of SDN, we have SDN controller, right? That's where a lot of the brains are and it's controlling all the different forwarding elements. Well, what's the domain of control itself for the controller? In the case of a data center, it's very simple. The answer is pretty clear. It's the data center. That's what it's controlling. Now, in the context of telecom, when you have a nationwide network spanning across cities, states, what's the control, what's the domain of a controller? Is it a, is it a central office? Is it a data center? Is it multiple data centers? So on and so forth. And hence, the hierarchical nature of telecom is different than enterprise. And these are the kind of issues that you know, we'll ha the industry has to address when we want to bring SDN on telecom. Would you agree, uh, Manish, that SDN technology uh, is moving at a slower pace than previous technologies? Would you agree with that? Oh, and that's, why? Why is that? uh, that's an interesting uh, question in terms of uh, is it really moving slower? I think uh, I've been in the industry for around 20 years, and I would say I've seen a lot of hype cycles uh, that have come and go. Uh, if I look at SDN, I would say yes, it's right now on the hype cycle. Uh, too much hype around, it's going to happen very quickly in telecom. I think the economics are compelling. It will happen, uh, but not in the timeline that many are trying to project. I think it's going to, 
the technology will need to be adapted to the telecom needs and hence I mean uh, if you think it's uh, slower or faster I think that's a different point of view but I do think given the economics it will happen uh, on the telcos but not as fast as uh, many might project. Manish you and I talked earlier about um, the competitiveness between the United States and companies like or co uh, countries rather like China, Japan, uh, Singapore um, and as far as broadband connectivity, broadband capacity, uh, small cell technology, um, building on top of legacy systems. Some of these, uh, I guess, newer next generation systems, they don't have the challenge of building on old uh, copper systems, old legacy systems, and the United States does have that challenge. Um, when it comes to software defined networking, does that challenge exist? The challenge definitely exists, and by the way, this is also one of the fundamental differences between enterprise and telecom. You can roll out a new data center, and you can do complete software-defined networking inside the data center. When you're dealing with telecom, and especially in uh, in a lot of geographies, U.S. for example, there, where there's a lot of legacy infrastructure that's already deployed, and then you have to overlay an SDN network on top of it. So you don't have a clean slate with which you start. The challenges that come in is in terms of you have probably existing infrastructure that's lying in the network uh, that's already rolled out and that infrastructure is not SDN capable. So when you overlay, you're, you're putting another layer of infrastructure on top of it which will be SDN enabled but there will be certain features or functionality that will get lost because you have a legacy infrastructure uh, underlying that will not be able to support some of those features or functions. Manish, can you uh, cite uh, a case study of sorts with one of your customers and how they're leveraging SDN technology? Absolutely. So I think uh, in the case of uh, our business, we do a lot of ATCA platforms which get deployed uh, for a variety of gateways in the mobile network. So uh, we are now working on bringing in layer two and layer three capabilities, so switching and uh, some of the routing capabilities inside our platform. But more importantly, what we want to do is make it SDN capable and provide the open flow like interfaces to the external controllers that can then come in and set up the internal topologies within the, the ATCA platform, both at the layer two and layer three level, being controlled by a controller. Now, that controller itself could be in skin inside ATCA or it could reside externally. And so that's how we're moving forward. And in this particular case for the LTE gateways that go in the packet core, making them SDN enabled. Manish, if we can just back up just for a moment, can we talk about what's, what are the market drivers for SDN technology? What's happening in the market that's uh, requiring this need for SDN technology? Yeah, I think, I think if you really look at the fundamental economics that SDN brings to the table, uh, it's really on two key vectors. I mean, m compelling benefits on CapEx. So if you really look at today how the infrastructure is built and who provides that infrastructure, it's a captive market uh, by the big tier ones who provide the routing and switching infrastructures and it's the way they provide and that's how the network is built. By really decoupling the brains and the bronze, you now have the capability to create a very vibrant ecosystem that's rapidly innovating and driving the costs out and hence really driving the capex out of the networks. Secondly, managing these networks have been very expensive so the operational aspects of it and the opex has been very high to manage and, and these are very cumbersome networks even to make simpler changes the, it's been very challenging and the rate at which new services get rolled out is growing exponentially so the network has to change and with SDN the operators then can realize much better OPEX economics so the economics with SDN are very compelling last thing I will add on that is SDN then also becomes the enabler for network function virtualization, which is really bringing about virtualized workloads on telecom infrastructure. And I think that's what the future is. Manish, you mentioned earlier that uh, there's a hype around SDN right now. Where do you see SDN technologies, let's say, in 2016? I think in by the time we get to 2016, uh, especially in the context of mobile networks, the next-gen networks, uh, uh, you will find a lot of infrastructure that will be SDN enabled, it will be SDN capable, uh, and 
we will it will be overlaying on a legacy infrastructure so i don't see that you know even by 2015 16 that a lot of legacy is going to get ripped off that doesn't happen in telecom but the newer infrastructure that will be getting rolled out by that timeline will be sdn capable i do see that manish we thank you so much for spending some time with us and talking to us about sdn thank you very much thanks for having me Thank <laughs> you.